Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, and thank you for watching this uh, short video titled Their Mainframe Was Hacked, How Safe Is Yours? Uh, my name is Mark Wilson, and I'm the Senior Director for BMC Mainframe Services. Um, I have uh, been talking about mainframe security for what seems an eternity these days, and um, I've been a mainframe for over 40 years now. And my specialist subject is mainframe security and mainframe pen testing, mainframe hacking. And the, the, the thought behind this short call is really um, the, the misnomer that, you know, is no news really good news? And what I mean by that is the fact that we don't hear great stories in the press very often of mainframes being hacked but the fact that we don't hear about it does that really mean it doesn't happen so is no news really good news well unfortunately not because there are many stories out there um, there are many rumors there are many myths but there are some actual actual mainframe hacks that have been perpetrated that yeah, in, in this one here, it says a stunning attack, in a stunning attack. And basically, the attacker yeah, hacked the active directory of this organization that meant that they were able to steal some credentials. And those credentials were then used to log on to the mainframe using SSH. The result of all of this is they lost a lot of data, a lot of mainframe data, but more importantly, a lot of PII data. So as it said here, this incident has been a wake up call yeah, for their organization. And as they say, for every business with a mainframe. So just because we don't hear about these things doesn't mean to say they don't exist. Here's a less sophisticated one where it was simply a brute force password attack using a password spraying script. And they had access to over 10,000 user IDs. Now this was largely down to poor controls, poor password settings, but at the end of the day, they were actually able to brute force this and log on to the system. What resulted in is they had many, many privileged or, or access to many privileged users and, and were able to log on with various different levels of elevated privileges. It's a little unclear as to what they actually did with this privilege. Again, yeah, people don't really shout about this stuff from the rooftops, but um, this is a, a very, very simple password spraying script brute force attacked the, the 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 next one that we'll we will talk about is the one that i'll spend a little bit of time on and this was um a south african bank and basically what happened is the attackers targeted an individual within the organization. And I've been talking about this for years. People don't often attack systems, they attack people. Yeah, we will be the weak link in. And they, 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 uh, they, they fished this uh, individual. And the individual happened to be one of the senior systems programmers at this organization. And basically what they did is they set up a, a fake LinkedIn page as a recruiter and then contacted the guy and said, look, we've got somebody in your local area who is looking for a senior mainframe systems programmer and they're prepared to pay X. Now they'd done the work and they knew that X was pretty much twice this person's salary. Now I love coming to work. I, I enjoy my job, but I come to get paid. And if somebody said to me, Mark, we'll pay you double what you're earning now to do the same job, I'd probably be interested. So. The guy responded, they sent him an email, it had an attachment, I believe it was a PDF, he double clicked on it, and because of a vulnerability on his laptop, it was able to install a 
keylogger. And what that keylogger saw was him logging onto the mainframe, user ID and password, and they were able to capture all of that. No multi-factor authentication. So the attackers were then able to log onto the system with the senior systems programmers elevated privileges. And, and this is what I say to, to techies these days. Yeah, the, when, when you start talking to security people, they're not there to make your job difficult. They're there to protect the system and protect you. Because I've long been an advocate of saying that you know, systems programmers stand in access, particularly on production systems, should really only be read. I don't have the ability to update stuff with my standard user ID. If I'm going to make a change and I'm following the change process, then use a break glass ID. There are technologies out there. BMC have some to allow you to yeah, check out a, a higher privileged user in a, in a, in a, in a, in a formal process that's all logged and, and audited. This this uh, the, this mainframe user didn't have that configuration. So because they've now compromised this yeah, privileged user, mainframe systems programmer, he's most likely got access to Palmlib, Palmlib, Linklist, probably the ability to update an APF authorized library. And, and I've said this many times when I talk about this stuff, at that point, you are only limited by your coding skills and your imagination, because you can do pretty much what you want to that systems. So yet yeah, just because we don't hear about these things doesn't mean they don't happen. And they're three very, very quick um, snippets of, of of things we've actually seen in the wild and our real life stories. So what can you do to uh, keep the the criminals out of your main and mainframe? Obviously bringing that mainframe data into the into the SOC, yeah, but also training the SOC to understand what they're looking at. But make sure the data that you send doesn't talk mainframe gobbledygook, yeah, speak, yeah. APF authorized link lists, yeah, SVCs. No, talk in the language that a SOC may or should understand. Yeah, this user has been compromised. This the system has been compromised. Yeah, the this the, this looks like an indicator of comp compromise for credential reuse or elevation of privileges. And you, you've got to be doing this in real time. The days of batching things up and saying, I'm going to send the data every 15 minutes or every 20 minutes or, or in some cases every 24 hours doesn't work anymore. But, but start to think about and actioning yeah, the fact that you can enable some automated detection and response. Because what we've got to keep doing is looking at these indicators of compromise and start to ask the difficult questions. Does this look bad? Yeah, I, I often say if it looks like a duck and walks like a duck, it's most likely a duck. Yeah. If it looks like a compromise or you are under attack, you probably are. So you need to do something about it. Um, you also need to think about monitoring those privileged users. And and here's the one that, that really gets, gets me is you know, test your incident response. What would you do today? if you suffered an incident on the mainframe? What about if you suffered a ransomware attack? How would you actually go about paying it if that was your policy? What would you do if your policy was not to pay it? How would you recover the data? How would you recover the data in a timely manner? And, and, and for me, most important of all, it's about education, educating the employees and not just the technical people, but all the people out in the business. Um, there are organisations out there that will come and they will work with you and they will do these simulated um, phishing attacks, test people's yeah, response to that email that just doesn't look quite right. But if you click, click on it, yeah, it could be it could be some um, yeah, malicious code that tries to run on your on your laptop, irrespective of what the laptop is, Windows, Mac, or or, or any of the Linux variants. But yeah, monitoring those users, educating the employees, and, and the one that, as I said, yeah, test your response. Yeah, do that scenario planning that says how would we recover. And you know, if this did happen to us, what would we do? Because at the moment, we don't see a great deal 
of um, response readiness when we talk to our clients for the very first time. And yeah, just to, just to wrap up, it's, you know, don't let that untold story happen to you and what we mean is yeah don't be the next one yeah we talked about three here in this very short presentation but they are not the only one the only ones thank you very much and uh, hope you enjoyed this short video